Welcome to Tone Talks. How's everybody doing today? This is attorney Antonio Moore coming to you from Tone Talks. I just wanted to have a brief discussion. This is a pop-up show about the changes that we've seen with black wealth in just one year and white wealth, how white wealth grew and black wealth collapsed and not one news story was written because everybody's just talking about like grifter black rise and black wealth as if it's still 1984 and it's not 1984. We know the numbers and white wealth is taking off. We have this happening in the shadow or in the backdrop of Jay Morrison and all of his Tulsa real estate failures. You know, the three time felon self-proclaimed and high school dropout who also had a bankruptcy who I told you would lose your money has now basically said he's going to lose your money. And I want to know what y'all going to do. We'll talk about that in a second. But let's get right into this discussion. I don't want to hold you too long because there's articles now coming out about a war within millennials. But what they're really saying is there's a difference between being a boomer hook millennial and a millennial who don't have nothing. And most of y'all ADOS people have been lying to yourself about what the situation is with your family structure. Let's get right into it. The new era that has arrived brings us back to a time where what you will become is based not on how much Chase will loan you without collateral, but rather what your grandfather left you so many years ago. This reality makes our personal family history more important than ever. I wrote that in 2013 in Huffington Post on a, an article called The Era Within Which American Legacy Rises. You can go read the whole article. But in it, I was telling you about the phase of, of life that we're in now in 2024 and what's coming. And I think for a lot of you, you couldn't grasp it because you had been living your life, not even through your own moment, but through your parents. So you were living in 2015 as if you were a young adult in 1985. Talking about we just got to get started or black uh, black land or whatever uh, Claude was talking about starting. Something that you were doing to make yourself believe that we had just misstepped somewhere. And if we did a right step, then we would be all right. And none of that was actually true because you needed transformational politics and breaking up of wealth at a scale that we have not seen since the Great Depression. And when me and Yvette Carnell told you that, you guys basically acted like you didn't understand while telling us that you had a better answer with much less education. Millennials could become the richest generation ever, but only if they already come from money. But let's get right into the numbers. So what made me really do this show is this chart. So this is the Federal Reserve Survey of Consumer Finances. It comes out quarterly. Um, not too many people even show it to you. What it shows is a breakdown of the chart that expresses wealth in category. So we've shown the racial chart that shows white people taking off and black people having no wealth. But these are the categories. But what has happened in a year or so is drastic to say the least. Now, I've shown it to you prior, as I showed you in 2022 with quarter three, where it basically shows that all of our wealth is, is nothing in comparison to white wealth, but also in addition, most of our wealth is either pension or home, largely likely held by people that are retirement age, and often they might not have graduated from high school or they barely graduated from high school. So few with some college. I mean, like you don't see the the jump that you see with people that are working age in terms of education. So it's all timing. So. And that's not to say they didn't work hard, but it's to say that they existed within a moment. And in that moment. They were catching the crumbs of the labor union movements, of women's rights, of everything else. And they played a role in a lack of politics that now has gutted that moment. And I'll show you in a second. But before we get into that, let's just talk about the specifics of what we've seen in one year. And again, no one's reported on this with Black people and Black wealth. We have this Black Economic Council that has these, these people that are in business in it and they're talking about uh uplift through home ownership or but they don't give a lot of numbers when you look at their their website it's just a lot of fluff and it feels like it's a way to push us to vote particularly for biden now i'm not here to advocate voting for trump 
But what I am not here to do is not get the numbers that show the truth of where black folks are at. So when you look at 2022 quarter three, black real estate was at 2.75 trillions. We know it's in trillions. And again, this is done by the Federal Reserve Survey of Consumer Finances. It was in trillions. White real estate was 31.12 trillion. In 2023, quarter four, the new data that just came out that I recently pulled, black real estate has dropped by $250 billion and white real estate has gone up by over $3 trillion. If you come down to stocks, which is corporate equities, stocks, and mutual funds, Black America has lost in one year, just about, nearly a third of all of its stock wealth, which was nearly none to start with, and nearly no one has talked about it, no one has reported on it, because they don't even know that this chart exists, but they're talking to you about wealth. You can see it right here, 2022 quarter three. This is in billions when you get to the decimal, $360 billion. 2023 quarter four, $270 billion. 2022 quarter three for whites in terms of stocks and mutual funds, they were at $28.17 trillion. In 2023, quarter four, they're at 35.46 trillion. Now, where this is important is you will not be able to afford to be here because you don't pay for here just in this lifetime. You pay for living today with money that was made in the 70s, in the 60s, in the 50s. Millennials could become the richest generation ever, but only if they already come from money. Let me repeat. A new article came out today basically telling you what I've been saying to you is spot on about wealth and the rise of legacy. In that article, they showed that there's a war happening between millennials themselves, but it's really still the same boomer war. It's just done between the boomer hook millennial and the millennial who don't have a boomer who did anything. And how have the richest millennials got so rich? Mainly this enormous wealth transfers from their parents, typically to help with buying their first home. Without my shows, Black America would be lost on why they can't afford to be American. I told you this for a decade. And in the chart, they show that the top 10% of millennials, uh, and, and this they, they, they were talking about the UK and the US, but they received like $150,000, $200,000. And that's in the UK. It's probably worse here. This is Financial Times. So we look at this chart in a year, just in corporate equities and mutual funds, white America has grown their stock wealth by $7 trillion, and black America has lost nearly a third of their nearly nothing in stocks and mutual funds to next to no value, $270 billion amongst 20 million families. And nobody's reporting on it. Understand that all of the black categories are worth less than 7 trillion combined. All of black wealth and white wealth just in one year gained that just in the stocks and mutual funds. But your kid going to go to UCLA and sit next to another kid with you giving them no money. Or Stanford or Harvard or Morehouse or Howard. The bulk of black wealth is in pensions. If you look, even the pension level dropped for blacks and went up for whites, albeit at a lesser degree. But still, look at the share of pension, and we'll get into the specifics, versus everything else. It's all pension. It's all Defined benefit pension entitlements and defined contribution pension entitlements, these two categories, and real estate. That's all that black wealth is. It's not business. It's not stock. It's not mutual fund. It's not even cash. And you guys are sitting here unaware 
playing around with full families that need you to have some plans. So let's 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 look at this thing. So so I called the Federal Reserve Survey Consumer Finances. They have governors, and that's what they call their leadership. And I asked, where's the cash on hand? Well, they told me that the cash on hand is down here in the other assets category, among some other things that are in there as well. But if you look, hmm, cash on hand even jumped for white people from 21.7 trillion in 2022 quarter three to 23.09 trillion. But it dropped for blacks from 1.13 or 1 trillion and 130 billion to about $740 billion in the other assets. Black wealth got decimated over this last year and was already nearly nothing. And all of you have changed nothing about your plans, have done nothing politically, have not even answered to the reality of what this means for you because you live in a metric of the single person. You got one friend that's boomer hooked and you don't know what their accounts are, but they had a nice Thanksgiving. So you know they got money. They live in a nice house. You don't know how many refis are in the house. Oh, there's more white people, Tone, so you're not uh, accounting for that. Well, I got an assessment on the number of white homes versus black. And there's about 83 million white homes. That's how white wealth is really held within the household, not within the individual, meaning me and my wife have a bank account. So there's 83 million white homes and 20 million black. That's a one to four ratio. When you look at the representation of the chart I just shown you right here, because that's all this chart is here, done here. Look at it. Does that look like one to four? Now, some of these lines on the black side are so small. Like when you talk about uh, $270 billion of stock that they created like a vague line, but it's actually not accurate against 35 trillion. So it's really zero. 83 million white homes, 35 and a half trillion dollars in stock, 13.9 trillion dollars in private business. What do you mean, Tom? What are you saying, private business? Well, let's go back. Let's look at it. So in private business, black folks in one year went from $360 billion in private business to $330 billion. They lost in that category too. While white America went from $14.78 trillion to $13.91. Now they lost some finally in one category here, but they still got almost $14 trillion in, in private business. That is real business. What we have is a lot of LLCs. And we have an aggregation of like a few, few black families speaking too much. I'll talk to you in a second about what I mean that don't understand the narrative of being black in America because they are an aberration in the truest sense. Goddamn NBA stars, or it just be the weirdest thing. In total, all black wealth is just $6.59 trillion. So when you add all these black categories, it adds up to $6.59 trillion. Again, I will tell you that white wealth in one year went from 20 and white wealth in terms of court just their corporate equities and mutual funds grew by over seven trillion just in that category but you gotta you're gonna be here and you're gonna raise your babies and you know what you're doing in total all black wealth is just 6.59 trillion dollars of that 4.68 trillion of it is house and pension and i would doubt that three and a half of it is in the hands of people that are retired that's not a functional group all your wealth in the hands of some retirees. Your working age people just go to work and don't end up with nothing. And part of the reason is because there wasn't enough transfer and there wasn't enough politics. There was a lot of self-interest out here. Millennials could become the richest generation ever, but only if they already come from money. And do you know what it's going to look like for black millennials as the boomers pass on and don't leave nothing behind? No train. What I was saying to you earlier is represented in this chart. I, I've shown this years ago, but here's a more recent version. Percent of black wealth owned by each black wealth decile. So imagine that you have all 20 million families and they're in 2 million slots of deciles. Well, the top 2 million black families have 63% of all the black wealth. 
but they black just like us and we let them talk and go on black enterprise and then they're going to talk about black people and they don't know shit about going on with black folk but if you look at the first, top 20 percent of black families of the little wealth we have the little 6.59 trillion they have a total of what 70 81 percent what is that ain't that about 81 percent what it look like 81% of the wealth in the top 4 million of the 20 million black families. And we don't ask, when can you shut up? We want to hear from the 16 million other families. The bottom half of the race has no wealth. Actually, when you add these categories up, it's negative wealth. Negative three, two zeros, another zero, because it's so small in a one, that's negative 2% for the whole bottom half of the race, negative 2%. So the whole bottom half of um, Black America, 10 million families, has negative 2% of the wealth level of the 6.59 trillion. And the top 10% of the Black families has 63%. And we have said nothing about intra-race wealth inequality. We have allowed them to set out a narrative and a story for Black America, and they don't know what Black people are going through. That top... Two million black families that LeBron James that the white people created that uh, whole reality of a black Oprah the whole reality of black people that have arrived the decadent veil black celebrity when you look at the racial composition of each wealth decile this puts all the races back together black people aren't really even part of the top ten percent of American we not part of that group. 10%. We're not even really part of the top 20% of America. Look at the red boxes. But we overrepresented in the bottom uh, uh, 20%. Look at the, how big the red boxes are. You basically have created an economic system that we cannot access, but that we have champions. Part of the reason that you see the millennials getting so much wealth is a total failure of politics for the last 30 to 40 years. If you just go back to 97, you can see it right here. So estate tax used to start, and I've shared this before, at $600,000. So anything after 600,000, if the house is worth $3 million, if the, if whatever, you gotta sell it. You gotta pay the tax or sell it. It was taxed at a top rate of 55%. Well, they don't start until 13 million now. So if you got 3 million, 5 million, 7 million, oh, you getting that. You getting that without no estate tax. Now, they've even got into calling it the death tax. It's not a death tax. It's an estate tax. And when you have this much wealth inequality, you need to break that estate tax all the way back down to $600,000, to $400,000. So everything after that, when this person dies, gets reallocated into the greater society, not into a single individual millennial's account. But none of y'all can see that because you following this. Y'all gave micro money, little $500 little sets to a three-time felon high school dropout that championed himself that way, that had a bankruptcy. When I told you that this would not work and I will see you in a couple of years, you acted like you were confused when me as a UCLA graduate that's a lawyer told you this don't make no sense. You deserve to lose your money. So now uh, JT Pocket Watcher is, is saying that the Legacy Center is being sold. Now, we'll see how that all goes. But none of this has made sense. He ain't paying no dividends. He ain't paid you your money. You got Boyce Watkins, who, along with others, played a role in validating this, bringing him on the show and saying that he's somebody and petting him on the head. You had boys actually go to the go to their gala and actually say that the infrastructure is solid. So you guys were watching Boyce Watkins taking his classes, and he had the guy on this. And understand, this is this is not any podcast. This is the Boyce Watkins Black Business School, J. Mr. Real Estate Morrison, high school dropout, three time felon, now major real estate mogul. But now the Legacy Center that has all of y'all money in it from the micro loans or whatever you want to call them that are gone. They selling that purportedly. 
and you have Boyce Watkins tell you the infrastructure is solid. I just wanted to come to you today and have a brief show. I wanted to talk about the reality of black wealth. What has happened in one year that nobody in America is talking about, but we can talk about uh, all kind of other stuff like J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar's rap battle or whether the Lakers make the playoffs or Rihanna having a new baby. But we cannot deal with what it means for black, and you can see it for yourself right here. Federal Reserve Survey of Consumer Finances shows black wealth 2022 quarter three at $360 billion of corporate equities, which is stocks and mutual funds. But then it's $270 billion. It shows whites at $28.17 trillion in 2022 quarter three, but now it's $35.46 trillion. You better do some politics and change this estate tax. You're already effed up on reparations with the people that you let come in and kind of move me and Yvette and all kind of stuff. You better figure this out. You done already ate the fruit when you had the child and you bought the wife now and, or the husband. Now it's time for you to figure it out and give everybody some answers. And I don't want to hear you don't know what to do. I need to know what you're going to do. I got that red light because it's like a stove in here and we cooking. So... When I pull back, what I what I start to see is that we don't really know how to count money and wealth. We don't understand where we live. I done did these articles and like nobody really wants to deal with the reality of what it means that five white families own more rural land than all of black America combined. Ain't no real estate fund going to fix that. They don't like the answer that we need transformative government to make sure that we fight back against things like what we just saw come out of Congress, stricter work requirements on food stamps that your family, that your extended family might need to survive. And you not. They just... When I look at $500, it's something that could be in your kid's college fund versus that zero that you got right now. When I look at $500, I look at a third of what the middle black family is worth when you take out depreciating assets. But I'm not guessing though. I'm here having a discussion about the realities of what it means to be black in America. Anything else. But for a lot of a fantastical one. And I want to pull back the covers today and have a real discussion about Jay Morrison and the Tulsa Real Estate Fund and what I'm seeing and whether it's a REIT. You know, I had to do all this research. I don't want to know about REITs. Understand this. I invited Jay Morrison or Jermaine Morrison onto the show. He knew about this through his people. He was invited. I guess he's chosen not to come, but I'm going to have this discussion. And understand this, I'm not having a second one. So there's no next week of a debate and all this, because I'm not here to debate. I don't have another fund. I'm only here to have a discussion about what I see with this Tulsa real estate and what I see with Jay Morrison. And the reason I have to talk about him individually is because he's tied himself so succinctly into the business in this odd key man kind of, unique my first ipo kind of way is because what you see with jay morrison is he's trying to take your wealth to make him wealth let me say that again the reason why i tie that in is because he's taking your wealth to make him wealth let me say what i what i mean if you really about black folks just take a thirty thousand dollar salary for the next two years no extra money for marketing and pictures and whatever else you're doing take thirty thousand dollars till you make this thing profitable and if you don't make it profitable, give people back their money. Oh, I think that might be a little hard because you want to split up 500,000 amongst seven people or some kind of obscene thing because you don't know that only 5% of black families make more than $112,000. Managing things and about being having a key man clause, which doesn't really, uh, you know, honestly, I, I had no idea why he added this key man clause. We are significantly dependent on Jay Morrison the loss or unavailability of his services would have an adverse effect on business operation and prospects and that we may not be able to obtain new management under the same financial agreements, which could result in the loss of your investment. That's not a common term. As an attorney, the only time I've seen him is in deals like when you do production deals, because say you, you do the deal with a particular producer, if he lead that company, you don't want to be with that company if they sell it or something. This is reverse. He got your money, but then if he leave, your money might disappear. Why would that be in the SEC document? It's not in the granite document. 
But now once you open that Pandora's box, once you start talking about I did a million dollar deal by 28 in a world where black folks don't really do million dollar deals all that often in a world where black folks, all of us struggle with student loans. We'll get to that in a second. You open up a whole Pandora's box for me to ask about you. So the two things that came to me and now I kind of have it, have it solidified is this lawsuit and this bankruptcy with Jay Morrison. So, you know, I'm, I'm literally figuring out how I want to, how I want to do this. I don't reach out to nobody. I'm not an investigative journalist, I'm an attorney, but we don't have black media. And when you don't have black media, who steps to the call? Dash radio, tone toss. Come on. And so like this individual, I think his name is Michael Levant. He reached out to me through, he reached out to me in my direct message and said he wanted to tell me his story. And I say, okay. Now you might not re remember that name, but it's the name on a lawsuit that Jay Morrison was involved in. It, I pulled it up on the last video I did. And this is what, what Michael Avant says to me. I've known Jermaine my whole, my whole life. You know, we are church people. And what he said is that he, he inherited land. He inherited land from his family, built a house on that land using equity from his current home. And then brought Jay in, Jermaine is his name, as a quarter percent interest owner or a quarter percent interest partner. Let me say that. Next thing you knew, it was sold out from under him. He sued for his $200,000. The charges were breach of contract, failure of consideration, fraud, fraudulent inducement, fraudulent transfer. And they settled at $200,000. This is all public record. They settled at $200,000. So a settlement is not like the judge orders you. That means y'all sat down and you said, I'm going to pay you. Let's just get rid of this. I owe you your money. And then that's in 2009. So since 2009, he ain't got paid. So then in 2016, Jermaine Morrison files a BK. And one of the, 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 the people that he's trying not to, trying to put in the BK is this Michael Levant guy. Understand this is what we're dealing with. So we got a whole thing about Tulsa real estate and black, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and black people losing their land and being stolen from. It don't matter if it's a white person or a black person that do it. The whole idea is that black people have been stolen from, and I'm with that concept. But if I find out that you stole from black folks, now, I'm on this you. thing. And I, I got it because, you know, he's done this himself by talking about making a million dollars. That's not what's shown in the BK. You can you can go find it yourself. It showed five thousand dollars in assets that he held and seven hundred thousand dollars in debt, including Mr. Avance. It showed a two thousand dollar a month in income. Sound real black to me. Let's pull up the BLS chart again. You in the middle. You right in the middle with all of us. I ain't in the middle though. <laughs> you know, it's just a trip because like I see this thing, and what I what I start to feel is like, are are we really understanding? what was said when it said that you need to pay people for the time that they worked already. You weren't working on this thing for two years full time though. Why would we pay you full time at the top 5% of all black income earners for two? Why would we do that? Why would we do that when we need to use all the money to try to compete against white companies that already got bills in? None of this makes sense, black folk. Fantastical, magical answers won't make sense. I keep telling you that you ask me for a solution. The first solution you gotta understand, stop drinking that soda pop. I need you to look at this thing and understand when something don't really add up. I need you to look at this budget. They got the budget here and they say when they get to $12 million, they gonna use 600,000 for something called working capital. Now, they define working capital as cost associated with our web development, marketing, and working capital. Hold up. So you're going to use 600000 on websites and marketing. Then you go to the Instagram for the, it's all like pictures. And, and is this like you going on trips around the world? And just showing, is this part of the, I need to know that as an investor. Whether you consider that to be how you're going to market this fund, because I don't want to pay for you to go on a trip. And I don't want no single black mother 
who really thinks that, that, that doesn't understand 8% ain't going to move the needle for her and that it really cuts into her ability to provide for herself to see you doing that and think you making money for her. Yvette, what's your take on this? Well, if, well if, if you go back and watch, and for those who want to know, the video that Jay Morrison put up is on his page where he's, where he's actually talking about, you know, why, he, how they, why they're doing it the way they're doing it. And one of the things he said is that we put up all the risks and we got to pay our sales. And Jay Morrison, I have to, I, I, I really, you know, he said he became a millionaire by 28. And then he made his first million off real estate in the same video. And then he also said something to the effect of, but, 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 but then we have, but then we have what Antonio just has brought up a bankruptcy. So I don't understand. You made a million, then there's a bankruptcy, but then you, you, you all invested 200000 And then how much do you think your time is worth, Jay Morris? Like, I, and then I need to see some paperwork. Expl on explain that. Explain that when you say how much your time is worth. Because usually when okay. you want me to pay you the sum that we talking about, Hundred of thousand, a hundred thousand, whatever it is, you you it's because you're missing out on something. Well, if we yeah. look at the numbers on the BK, it's not like you're missing out on nothing. So I'm not understanding. Are we so you're saying then you're saying pay me because I have these unique relationships? Well, lay those out because in the granite form they laid them out. And they didn't ask for what you asked for. They wanted to come support. I will. So look, um I so will. Yvette, I'm coming back to you and we, we got the pictures of you know looking like Montel Jordan and we got the R and B album mansion pictures and we got the wedding and it's 50 dollars to stream the wedding and then we got all kind of things like that what do you think about the Im imagery of selling financial like information to black folks as though it's an r&b album well i i but see but see i don't even think he under like i like when i watched that video one of the things that the jay morrison video that i that i that i the second time i watched it I began to wonder, like, does this guy, is this guy actually believe himself to be, like, first of all, he calls himself Little Malcolm. How old is this Negro? You don't, you like, you call yourself Little Malcolm when you're 12. And Malcolm X said, you know, show me a Catholic and I'll show you a blood sucker. But I don't even think you even read any, read any history about that. But I'm not even going to get into all that. What you're doing does not, for you to be in, for you to be showing that level of opulence and then, you know, and, 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 and trying to be puff daddy. And, and then comparing yourself to Malcolm, you just cobbled together a bunch of madness to try to make something work, and you stuck this thing together with duct tape that don't make sense. Now, if this man had had tried to answer the questions legitimately without all the snark and all that stuff that he came with, because your first video wasn't snark, you were just asking some legitimate questions, that's just what it was. He came with all that snark, and whenever I see people come like that for no reason, I start asking, what are you trying to hide? Because on one hand, you'll say, we can't do it like the white man. We got to do it this way. But then you'll say, I got my idea from a white man. I heard a white man say this, and it gave me the idea. And I want to be around this board and look like white people. I want to do. I want to be in the Gucci store like white people. So I don't understand, I don't really understand what no. you're talking about. Let's take this. I use, you know, he's he from the dope game. I'm going to use a key as an example. So if, if I got a key that's worth 10K or 12K, and then I just sell you the wrapper the key is in, but I sell it to you for $100. Did I undercut the market, or did I just try to sell you a wrapper that's worth a, a 50 cents for $100? You missing the key inside. That's So essentially, Tulsa Real Estate Fund is the outside, kind of, the duct tape version of the outside of a real REIT. From my